before, stay with us through the eyes of NASA on NASA television. This is the place I'm to watching it there. be. All right. Yanni, hola, como estas? Bien, usted? <laughs> okay, this is a win-win situation for America. We have a partial eclipse and a total eclipse. Explain the difference. So today, pretty much, the moon is going to come across the Earth and the sun. So North America, Central America, and parts of South America are going to see a partial solar eclipse, which means that the moon is going to partially block the sun. It's going to look like the moon took a bite of the sun, like you have seen on the previous images. A total solar eclipse is going to happen in a very narrow path, 70 miles wide that comes all the way from Oregon, crossing the whole continent of the United States, and getting out here in South Carolina, you're gonna see a total solar eclipse, which means that the moon is gonna completely block the surface of the sun, and you're gonna be able to see the solar atmosphere, the solar corona, with your own eyes. They will turn into night, which means the stars and the brightest planets are gonna come out. Johnny, Alex, you guys have been waiting for this for a long time. As all these other scientists around the nation, this is the day we've been waiting for, and we're here, Eclipse Central. You guys, if you're here, this is the place to be. We have remote NASA TV broadcast sites along the path of totality, so that anyone watching along with us can also experience the total solar eclipse. We'll also share information about how to experience the eclipse safely wherever you are, and give you a peek at all the exciting plans NASA experts have today. Alex, okay, so, Mr. Solar Man, <laughs> what is so unique about the solar eclipse? Well, this is an amazing opportunity. The last time we had a total solar eclipse in the continental U.S. was 79. But the last time we had one that went from coast to coast was 1918, 99 years ago. So we are having a total solar eclipse that's covering a huge portion of populated, accessible land this is giving us an unprecedented opportunity to study, to look at the impacts on the Earth, to see the corona, and give us science like we've never had before. I mean, the last time we had this kind of connection to where we are and who we are was actually really the Apollo 8 Earth rise. And that gave us a perspective outside of just the Earth. It showed us that we were part of something bigger. And that's what this total solar eclipse brings for us. It allows us a window into the universe. And this is the most connected, most well-observed event that we've ever had in terms of a solar, total solar eclipse. The data and the experiences are going to be amazing. Okay, so we're certainly witnessing a monumental celestial and historical event today. We'd like to take a moment to talk about safety. So, Johnny, can you can you help me out here? So, I'll help you out. You never, never look directly at the sun, and you may have seen these eclipse glasses, and they're designed with special purpose solar filters. Ordinary sunglasses, even very dark ones, are not safe for looking at the sun. Now, if you're in the path of totality, there is a short time frame that you can take your glasses off. This is only only when the moon completely blocks the sun. And that is during totality. Let's watch this video to learn more. So, Alex and Jody, I'm very fortunate that I have glasses 
And a lot of people have glasses, but a lot of people don't have glasses. Yes. So what are other options? Let me start with you, Alex, on how they can view the eclipse. Well, Thanks. the simplest thing to remember to look at it at indirectly is a pinhole viewer. And there's a lot of ways you can make a pinhole. You can take a simple piece of paper, poke a hole in it. In fact, I've got here a 3D map of the path across the U.S. with a hole in it that I can use as a pinhole to project the circular sun down on the ground, and then you can see the moon move across it. As a matter of fact, anything with holes, including this colander, is something you can use to look at the eclipse. But you can also use something a little more sophisticated if you want. So you can actually make a box. You actually just do two holes in one side of the box and then put white paper on the inside. Then put aluminum foil, do a hole in the middle, not too big, that you can actually project the sun inside the box. Make sure that the sun is actually behind you so you can actually look at it inside of the box. It will be an amazing projection. Okay, so before I toss the social, I gotta do this because we're on the College of Charleston and College of Charleston students, make some noise! That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so the social media world is going to break records. So let me toss to my man, John, on the social front, what's going on? Thanks, Dwayne. There are literally millions of people watching this broadcast right now. Uh, we're going to be monitoring the conversation online and taking your questions as a total solar eclipse treks across the United States. There's a tremendous amount of excitement online, and we should want to share with you at home. So we will show you images of the eclipse from your unique vantage point. Submit your pictures and questions using the hashtag Eclipse2017 and follow the conversation online. For updates, be sure to follow, let's see if I can remember all these, uh, uh, NASA on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Snapchat, and LinkedIn. Additionally, we're providing live coverage during the eclipse on Facebook Live on NASA's Facebook page. You can ask your questions in the comment thread. Check out their streaming sites like uh, NASA's Periscope account on Twitter, Twitch TV, Ustream, and on YouTube. And of course, you can watch it on NASA.gov and NASA.gov slash Eclipse Live and on the NASA app. And we have a special feature for you. If you visit our Facebook Live page, along with this broadcast, we have a 360 view from right here in Charleston, South Carolina. With this tool, you can pan around on your computer and mobile device and even look up to the sky as uh, the moon transits the sun during the eclipse. It'll be like you're right here with us in Charleston, minus the sweltering heat. Visit the NASA Facebook page and check it out. And finally, share your image of the eclipse with us using the hashtag Eclipse2017 on our Flickr page, which is up here online right now. Share your images with us, and we'll share them right here in the broadcast and also on social media. Um, and finally, enjoy your Eclipse viewing, and remember to ask your questions with the hashtag Eclipse2017. Back to you, Dwayne. Well, John, it's uh, social media is going to break some records, and we're going to be coming back to you more and more. So you got to know that one of the most important things here for today is the weather. So, Sean, you know, I'm looking at Charleston skies. we got clouds. I hope that's going to get better, but what's going on around the nation? Over to you. That's right, Dwayne. Yes, the weather is the key factor for viewing today's total solar eclipse. Right here in Charleston, it's about 86 degrees, but with the humidity, it feels more like 99 right now. But what we want to do right now is show you a uh, satellite image from our friends at NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This is from the GO-16 satellite. It's a brand-new weather satellite that NASA built for NOAA and was launched last year that's going to give you the latest and greatest very detailed imagery of cloud cover across the country. And what you can see is that if things are looking really good for the uh, early parts of the path of totality, places like uh, Oregon and Idaho and Wyoming, and then as you get into parts of the uh, middle section of the country, more places like uh, Beatrice, Nebraska, maybe into Kansas City, Jefferson City, there is some uh, cloud cover there that may uh, hinder your ability to view the eclipse. And it uh, looks like as you get into Carbondale, skies are uh, Still pretty good there. There's, there are some storm systems developing to the north in uh, other parts of Illinois. And, and really, it, things are looking clear again until you get back here in Charleston. As you said, Dwayne, I'm looking up at the clouds uh, to where the sun will be in about an hour. And uh, there is significant cloud cover, but we're keeping our fingers crossed. I do see some, uh, some uh, pockets of blue in there. So hopefully we'll get to see something. Uh, but we'll have more for you later in the broadcast, Dwayne. And so I hope that you can use some of your connections to uh, get us some good weather here in Charleston. So the moon is already moving across the face of the sun. We're getting close to viewing our first total eclipse of the day. We're minutes away. And remember, the total solar eclipse starts on the west coast of the United States in Oregon. 
and we will be bringing you live images as it occurs. NASA's Ames Research Center's Jesse Carpenter is standing by in Salem, Oregon at the Oregon State Fairgrounds. Jesse, give us a status report. Oh, wow. Thanks, Dwayne. Totality is almost here. Oh, this is so exciting. And just before we get to that, though, we, I want to introduce Andrea Edgecomb again from the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. Hey. Hi. So uh, tell us just quickly, tell us a little bit about this really fun, cool viewing event that's going on here. Yeah, well, we are here. We have almost 9,000 people here at the Oregon State Fairgrounds, and uh, we've had some cool stage presentations. We heard from NASA astronaut Don Pettit. He's an Oregonian. Uh, we had a University of Oregon professor. And behind us, we have some space science partners who've been doing some cool educational activities and really interacting with the crowd. So it's been an awesome morning, and we can't wait for totality in a few minutes. This is such a great event. Thank you for joining us again. We really appreciate it. I know you got to get going. So yeah, thank you. It's coming soon. <laughs> and joining us now to talk to us about the sun and give us more information is NASA lead scientist for Eclipse 2017, Marulika Guhatakarta from Ames Research Center. Hi, Lika. Hey, Jesse. Hey, it's almost here. It's almost here. So, how many of these, how many eclipses have you seen? I went to see nine eclipses and I actually landed up seeing six. The other three had inclement weather. Oh. We don't have that here today. No, we don't. It's going to be seven. <laughs> so, what can, you, what can you tell us about the sun that will help our audience understand better? I just want to start by saying I'm in awe at this moment right now. And whatever I say, kind of take it with that filter because we are very close to totality. We are. We live in the outer atmosphere of this magnificent, dynamic, magnetically variable star that dominates every cubic inch of space in our solar system. And if I can get the video, what you would see in the video is that the sun produces storms that can be all engulfing, you know, generating this environment called space weather. The inner edge of the corona that you see that's black in the yeah, video is because there, the yeah. sun is so intense that it overwhelms the dim brightness of the corona. And, and uh, so even from space, we can't absorb the inner part of the corona. And not only Earth, you know, but the entire solar system, as you can see, lives with this dynamic star. Corona is the region where space weather is born and conditions are set for a supersonic solar wind and a super hot corona, two of our outstanding questions in heliophysics, in physics, really. To understand the corona better, NASA is actually going to be launching a mission next year, almost a year from now, how coincidental, called Parker Solar Probe. It is actually going to go touch the sun, you know, and it's going to get closer to any other spacecraft has gone before to the sun to study the corona, to actually sample the very corona that we will be seeing very soon. Yes, we will. It's almost here. Thank you. Thank you, Lika, for joining Pleasure. us. And thank you for sharing that. So now we're going to take it back to NASA Eclipse Central in Charleston. Take it away, Dwayne. Okay, now, just now coming in, we have an exclusive sneak peek of the total solar eclipse, and it is arriving at the United States. It's over the Pacific Ocean and about to reach Oregon. This is the celestial event that we've all been waiting and anticipating for years. We'll begin looking through the eyes of NASA out the window of our G3 aircraft. Let's take in the view. <laughs> And now we're looking at the first glimpse of the total eclipse from the ground. Wait, let's see. That's still the G3. There we go. And now we're looking at the first glimpse of the total eclipse from the ground on United States soil. This is coming to us from Salem, Oregon, where thousands of people are gathered, get gathered and experiencing this monumental event, a total solar eclipse. Let's take a look and take in the view. That's the G3. 
G3 there. Explain that and, and 
safety too, right? So right now, this was the moment when you see that flash of light. That's the moment when it's time to put your glasses back on or start using your indirect methods because now it's too bright and it can damage your eyes. Yes. Safety first, people. Always. Wow. So the folks in Salem, Oregon, I mean, they're like, juice. Well, I mean, they're, they got it. They, they got, got, they got they, the good. They've got a perfect view and they are seeing the nat one of nature's most amazing spectacles. I can just, I can only imagine the reaction on the ground from the folks there. Oh, they are probably Gats completely me. overwhelmed yeah. right now. Completely overwhelmed. <laughs> well, I certainly hope we get something like that. <laughs> but so, yeah. we've got it, we've got it here on NASA television through the eyes of NASA. And we got the International Space Station coming up and other images only we can bring. Only NASA right. can bring, yes. completely dark or is it coming out? No, it's what's coming... happening now is the, the filters are back on, the safe solar filters for the telescope, and now you see the crescent, which is the sun, basically now being revealed after the eclipse. So we're now back to the partial phase yes. in the other direction. Exactly. Now how fast is this going? <laughs> well, this shadow is passing across the country, depending on where you are, anywhere from 1,200 to 1,800 miles an hour. So this is moving incredibly fast because the moon itself in its orbit is moving at almost 3,400 miles an hour. And that in combination with the rotation of the Earth is what gives us a shadow moving that fast. Okay, so Guy, let's, let's talk about space weather. Um, seeing this and space weather is so important. So just.